So, strap just broke and the body kind of just violently fell on the ground. It's okay. It's, this is fine. It's okay. Just, we need to not look at it a lot because it's not okay. Did I tell you I've been looking for one of these bodies for like 15 years? <laughs> You might be on TikTok and you might see a little fat ass and you're like, oh shit, let me like this for the algorithm. You know what I'm saying? What's up? It's Casey from Casey's Customs. We are starting on our Supernatural Impala build. In this video, I find a hot rod chassis and we start doing our body swap. Let's get to work. If you squint, it's mint. If you have enough denial and just imagination, you can already see the chassis under the body. <laughs> we are finally working on Baby, the Supernatural Impala. Come on, this is the car of a lifetime. Trust me, this thing's still going to be badass when it's 40. It is a 67 four-door hardtop. I have been looking for one of these cars for 15 years, probably. Every time I would find one, it wouldn't be a four-door hardtop, or they would want 20 grand for it. I didn't have the money to pay for it, yada, yada, yada. Finally got one about a month ago, but the frame is shot. That is okay, because I wanted to make a hot rod version of Baby anyways, and today I bought the perfect chassis. This is a 1996 Impala SS chassis LT. This is basically a vet motor from the 90s. Four wheel slotted disc brakes and pause track. Oh, this is a absolute perfect chassis. It's going to go under there really, really nicely. The wheelbase is almost perfect. We might have to stretch it a little bit, but I mean, as far as picking a chassis swap, I could not have found a better one. And the fact that the body is already off of it is even nicer. That just lefts work I have to do. And I got it for a really good deal. So we just picked this up. We need to obviously do some moving around. I want to get the Impala over here because we're going to have to just cut everything out of it. We got to gut it to get it on this frame. And if you haven't watched any other videos on the Impala, let me tell you, there is eight inches of rat shit in this thing. I've already power washed it like two times. There's still just rat shit, mouse shit everywhere. And we need to gut all this. All the interior needs to come out. We got to cut all the floor out. The chassis is still under it, but it's really, really bad. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, see, it's essentially missing, but we need to get all that shit out of there. Got to get it all cleaned up, get it cut out. And then we can do the old wah, wah, put it right on top. So we got to get this out of the way. Move this over here. I think I'll probably start cutting it outside just because of said mouse shit, rat shit. We can get it all out, kind of sweep out the garage a little bit easier and then pull it inside and finish cutting it up. Okay, we got the chassis moved out of the way. Got the body over here. It is time to start cutting. I just opened up the door. I went to open up this door and look, there's just rat shit everywhere. It's even in the doors. Oh, yeah. So we're going to get some gloves on. I want to get the seats out first, obviously. Get the trunk opened up. And we can kind of just start stripping everything out. Probably take all these door panels off and shit. Then we'll get the uh, saws all out and start cutting our floor. And we'll try and keep as much of the floor as possible. But I don't know how much of that is going to work out, if that makes any sense. This is a very different frame from what we are using but I want to use as much sheet metal as I can because the rear of the floor is actually okay, minus all the rat shit. So yeah, Ugh, let's get some gloves on and start cleaning. Oh, pain in the ass. Oh, finally got it out. <sighs> Look underneath that seat. Oh, so much rat shit. God. I'm going to clean it out some more and then get the back seat out. Oh. Okay. Got it cleaned out most of the way. I still haven't even got the door panels yet. I can't find my handle remover that I need for the window cranks and the door handles and shit. So I'm just gonna put a pin in those for now, but we did get the floor all cleaned up and the roof, the roof had mouse shit in it too, rat shit. Oh, this is by far the worst one I've ever had and I've had some pretty bad ones, but 
I mean, it's like, I think we've, I think I did two trash cans full the other day. There's probably a hundred pounds on the ground. And then this one's full too. Just, oh, so bad. So bad. I put on probably 10 different pairs of gloves because <laughs> I don't, I don't play with that shit. Here's what I'm going to do now though. I was going to start cutting the floor out, but I actually still have a frame under this thing that needs to come out. And I don't know exactly where it mounts in here because I don't see because shit is just rusted so bad. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm actually going to lift the body up with my hoist and then get under here, cut the frame out. If I take the hood off, there's a couple spots on the firewall I can actually pick the body up from. I think I'm going to do that. Then I can kind of look up under there and see how I'm going to get this frame out because I need to get the frame out first and then we'll start cutting the floor. Let's do that. Okay, got it all jacked up. We can see our frame a little bit better now. Now that's held up by the hoist and you can see the front subframe i guess it's a subframe it's kind of a it's kind of not a unibody and a unibody if that makes any sense but anyways these front sections are about to fall off i mean there's nothing to even hold them there uh yeah the ground strap is holding this side <laughs> but the middle sections are essentially gone my rear looks actually a little bit stronger than i thought it was so i think what i'm gonna do while i have this jacked up by the hoist i think i might jack up the rear end with my you know car jack and put some jack stands under there and see how much of it's gonna hold you can see that it's bad but might make it easier to cut it out if i have this ass end up too so yeah let's try that i don't know if it's gonna work or not but we gotta get all that out of there and then start cutting the floor out so also i think i spent six hours so far just cleaning this shit out and it took forever to get that floor or that ground clean poor monty is covered it now that's okay that's okay we're gonna paint that in a week or so uh, yeah okay <laughs> let's get to work check it out me and dad got the frame out and that is why this was not a fifteen thousand dollar car <laughs> i bet if i jump right here this one's done yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's real bad. Oh. Yeah, this. Thank you very much. <laughs> Check it out. She actually unbolted, believe it or not. Oof. Wow. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna chop this frame up in a couple pieces so it'll be easier to throw away. And then tomorrow, we will start cutting the floor up so that we can get our, hopefully accept our new frame. It's the magical floating Impala. Me and the old man got this thing completely cut up yesterday. Got the frame out of here. I got all that shit thrown away. The frame was bad. It is gone. It is time to start making room for our new frame. And I want to try and use some of this floor i don't know if i can use it all i might not even be able to use any of it but let me show you something real quick this obviously does not have a frame it is a hardtop car which is essentially a convertible yes it has a roof but there's no post for strength and check this out i have no strain on anything all my gaps are good the reason is because on a lot of hardtop cars or convertible cars they reinforce the living shit out of these rockers. So I do not want to cut those. Those are what is very, very important. You start cutting those and everything can start bowing and getting wonky on you. And you're gonna have to start doing cross bracing before we get it on the chassis. I don't want to do that. The good news is the frame we have, it is narrow enough. It will fit just on the inside, like right there. So I'm gonna use that as a line to cut. And I think what I'm gonna do first, because basically this front is shit, I'm gonna cut to right there, all the way across. I would love to keep that if I can. I don't know if that's gonna work with our frame, but for now, I'm gonna cut out that front section there, and then probably, I'll probably just go ahead and cut out the whole trunk, because that's not very good. Um, let me see. 
yeah, yeah. I'll probably just cut the whole trunk out right there. This hump right here in the floor is a whole lot of strength, and I would love to leave that intact if possible. It might not happen depending on, you know, when we get the frame on it. But if I get these floors cut out of here, we can start putting it on the chassis to kind of see how everything's going to work out. So, uh, yeah, let's get to cutting. Okay. Good news. I got that all the way out. Bad news. I'm doing some measuring on this hump back here. And it looks like from the frame, it goes up around eight to 10 inches. Kind of hard to measure because obviously I don't have a frame in it, but that hump is essentially eight to 10 inches. Let's call it 10 to be on the safe side. Well, look at this. I'm gonna hurt your feelings. Yes, you did. No. Look at that floor. No, listen, I gotta go even more. I know you're the original floor guy, but listen, check this out. I was actually just talking about this on camera. See the hump? So the Impala hump, right? Yeah. From the frame rail, if you measure underneath, uh -huh. that hump goes up about eight inches. Uh -huh. Guess how much the hump goes up on the new one? Two. 16. <laughs> <laughs> so there ain't no fucking way any of that's gonna fit. I'm gonna probably have to cut the package tray. Take this. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Right and then it'll go, it yeah, but it's gonna have to. Okay, dad came in and helped me. He really, really wanted to keep the stock floor on the Impala, he was like, oh, you know, make it work. It's just impossible after looking at how much this kicks up compared to the old one. Also, we got to do other measurements and I knew the wheelbase was off a little bit. I thought it was like an inch and a half because I thought this was a 117 wheelbase, like 116 and three quarters or whatever it was. We measured it, it's actually 115. <laughs> so it is not nearly long enough. The Impala is 119. You can kind of finagle, you know, an inch and a half. You, you can't finagle four inches. So we went ahead, pulled the chassis in. I'm gonna have to lengthen it. The good news is when there's not a body on it, it's pretty goddamn easy to lengthen. We're just gonna go whoosh, put some real heavy duty C channel in there, weld the living shit out of it. We will have to lengthen the drive shaft, which is a little bit pain in the ass, but hopefully all of my brake lines and fuel lines, I can just stretch them a little bit. I don't know, we might have to lengthen those too, but we'll see. That's all stuff I'm gonna be doing later. For now, we're gonna keep on cutting. Now that we know exactly what we're using and what we're not, which is basically not using anything, I'm just gonna cut the living shit out of all of it. Cut right there at the package tray reinforcements and just, it needs to be basically like the floor is all the way down. So let's get to work. Okay, check it out. It is finally 100% cut out. We should be plenty wide enough. The only thing that is questionable, we might have to go up a little bit on the firewall. Everything else should be good. Great news on the framework. Found some metal at my uncle's that my dad had for another project. This is super heavy duty two by four inch frame, which is actually thicker than the stock frame. So it's gonna be really easy to stretch it. So we're gonna start on that tomorrow, get the frame stretched, hopefully get the body on there. Today was another 12 hour day. So we are jamming, <laughs> but I mean, we've came a long ass way in two days. Okay, I stole this sucker from my kid, so I'm gonna use it as my pointer. Today, we are going to stretch this frame and then get this frame underneath the Impala. We need to stretch it four inches so that it will match the wheelbase. We have a bunch of square tubing, rectangle tubing rather, that fits exactly inside that frame rail, which is gonna make this kind of easy. The only thing is we gotta get rid of a lot of stuff. Our brake lines, fuel lines, all of that is in the way. I'm hoping there's enough slack in it to stretch. Most likely there's probably not, but we're gonna see. I'm gonna take off all my clamps and see how much we can move it. Hopefully I can get just move it out of the way, make my cut and still use it. This gas tank needs to go away. I do not wanna be doing any cutting or anything while there is a gas tank and it might be full. I don't know, it feels like it has a lot of gas in it. So I'm gonna undo it first, get it the hell out of the shop, see if we can't move those lines. Then we're gonna start cutting. Um, not only do I have the metal that needs to go in there for our stretch, I have a bunch of extra metal that I can put on the sides to kind of reinforce it while we are doing the stretching. So it shouldn't be too hard. The good news is this is about as straight a section as you can get. So that makes life easy. If anybody watched me cut up this blazer frame, it had a bunch of kicks in it and curves and it was a pain in the ass. This one's gonna be a lot more easy, but let's start breaking this shit down and cut some stuff. Okay. 
Getting ready to make our cut. I went ahead, added some bracing because I got to look in and there's really no cross members in this. Obviously there's one right there, but there's none back here. So I was worried as soon as I cut it, it was just gonna come in a bunch. That sounded said. dirty. <laughs> Anyways, I was worried it was gonna pull in a bunch. That sounds better. I also got lucky because we were able to stretch our brake lines. It looks like all that's gonna be able to be fine. I should have enough room. Maybe not the e-brake cable, it's a little too tight. The rest of it, I think we're just gonna be able to, basically we have enough slack in them to just not have to cut them. At least not right now. We might have to whenever we remount our you know, tank and stuff later down the line. And the exhaust, went ahead and just cut those right there and I got them held up with that ratchet strap. So all this should be able to come forward. And technically all you should need to do is run another pipe from here to there that'll be you know like a four inch section so should be pretty easy to clean up all that let me tell you sometimes when you get to stretching these chassis it just turns into like you know two days more work than you thought this actually i got basically all done in an hour and a half and it's ready to cut so i'm very very excited um, i also have it on jack stands right now so when i cut it it doesn't move on me should just be able to slide the back a little bit and then Put our piece in there. I'm saying all that and I'm kind of like, eh, it might not work also. I don't know, let's cut some shit. Okay, got the piece in there, got it welded, went ahead and drilled a couple holes for plug welds, got those too. We still need to finish welding it completely, especially on the inside, but it ain't going nowhere. This is going to be perfect for where I'm at right now. I'm also going to leave my cross bracing in just for now. They're not in the way by any means, but this took forever and this video is starting to add up. I probably am already at 30 hours, maybe more, and I want to see this damn body on there. And unfortunately... As I'm looking at stuff, going back and forth, I think I might need to do some more cutting in the firewall and uh, these inner fenders too, so I don't know. So it's definitely not going anywhere. I actually took all the jacks off of it, so it's sitting on its own weight right now. Cross measured it, everything is perfect. So let's flip that baby around and uh, see if we can't put it under there and see what else needs cut more than anything. <laughs> So the strap just broke and the body kind of just violently fell on the ground. It's okay. It's, this is fine. It's okay. Just we need to not look at it a lot because it's not okay. Did I tell you I've been looking for one of these bodies for like 15 years? <laughs> you might be on TikTok and you might see a little fat ass and you're like, oh shit. Let me like this for the algorithm, you know what I'm saying? Also, fun fact, uh, that took like 30 minutes to get this thing spun around. <laughs> I think it's okay. It looks like the little dolly card I had under it caught it and it didn't look like it did any damage, but obviously we need to fix that real quick and then try and roll the frame out. Check it out. I got the inner fenders out. I got the bottom of the firewall cut out. Got the steering wheel out, should have plenty of room. I definitely cut extra so that I don't have any issues. And right now I have it <laughs> balancing, so it's actually level. I had to use a spare tire <laughs> and then I had to C-clamp a board to it, but should just be a straight shot underneath it. I might have to go up a little bit, but uh, we're gonna see what happens. It's time to roll the chassis underneath. I think we're good, but we're gonna find out. Check it out, it's sitting on its own. <laughs> Damn, that looks cool. I gotta go up a little bit in the back. I think what I'm gonna do real quick, running out of daylight already. This is like our third or whatever, fourth 12 hour day. I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a piece of square tubing across the back and then just tack weld it to the trunk floor to just to kind of hold it up for now. Cause I would like to get the hoist out of the way and the jack out of the way and actually see what it looks like, you know, by itself and not have all the shit kind of holding it up. It's kind of sitting on its own, kind of not. But yeah, let's do that real quick. Check it out. <laughs> 
Essen's a little bit too low, but I am so fucking happy. Ooh, fits pretty good. Like I said, should have raised the ass end up a little bit, but I just wanted to get like some temporary mounts in there. Nothing solid. I can still basically pick this up with a jack, but uh, man, I've been smiling ear to ear. <laughs> look at that fucking thing. I hate these rims, but they do look good as wide as they are. Man, check that thing out. This is going to be the coolest Supernatural build on the planet. I love Supernatural and I love the cars, but there's like... 20 of them that i've seen that are already restored they look exactly like the ones in the tv show which is cool i want mine to look the same on the outside but i want it to uh you know have a little more shit to it a little we gotta we gotta hot rod a little bit of everything just like our you know our monte carlo from training day it's got more you know hot rod shit to it than it needs but uh we gotta put our touch on it man i'm so fucking happy i'm not a four-door guy but uh this one is fucking cool man i love it check it out the hood might still go i don't know i might have to uh change out this funky intake i don't know damn that looks good i just said i might have to take this intake off i don't know actually now that i'm looking at it, it might actually fit i'm not gonna mess with it right now obviously but uh check this out i can damn near put the brake booster in where it sits it's just zip tied together but if these were you know holes instead of studs I can just shove it in right there. So that makes me really happy. We should be able to make the brakes work pretty easily. Sweet, man. Got a ton of hours in this video. I might have 40 hours in this week, considering how much dad helped me. <laughs> Funny enough, I came over here today and I was just going to do kind of a walk around to button up the video. And the rear end being so low just kept bugging me. So naturally, I cut it out and raised up my rear mount that I made two inches. And now it's damn near level. It's still a little bit lower, but nothing like it was. I had that ass end was way down. But, uh, boy, she's sitting pretty now. I mean, I hate these wheels with a vengeance. But uh, that's a pretty cool looking car right there. Oh, very, very happy. Man, I'm so happy. We 100% are going to have to change that intake. <laughs> or air cleaner, or whatever the hell that is. Because I think it's going to hit. I don't know. We'll find out. I'm not going to deal with it right now. But, uh, ooh, man, I'm so happy. Looks like a, almost like a pro street setup. <laughs> that is a cool looking car. <laughs> Check it out. I rolled it inside. It's actually rolling. It's a rolling chassis. Oh, look at the size of that bitch. It's like three feet longer than the Blazer. <laughs> it's such a big girl. Also, look at this motor. I mean, it looks like I've stuffed an elephant in a bathroom or something. Just, it looks so good. It's a giant motor. This is just the coolest hot rod chassis that I could even pick. I'm so happy I found it. I have been looking for a chassis for this car for six weeks. And I was looking at rear wheel drives Cadillacs for a little bit. I was looking at stock chassis. I was like, yeah, maybe. Even though I knew that would be boring, I was kind of looking at that. And this just worked out perfect. Uh, 96 Impala SS, which is kind of like a, you know, hot rod of the mid 90s. And we're gonna have a ton of fun. We're gonna tune the living shit out of this motor. I forgot to add, somebody sent me this. It's a pillowcase. Somebody sent that to my PO box and I think it's hilarious. My wife wants it. I think I'm gonna have to keep it in the shop because she's gonna take it and she doesn't need to have it. Also, somebody sent the car, the actual car from Supernatural, a little die cast. Super, super cool. I do not promote my P.O. box enough. If you do want to send me something, it is listed in the description of this video. If you want to send me something, I need to start doing stickers. I said a while ago I was going to start putting other shop stickers on my door, and I never did it. So start sending stuff away. We are definitely going to do that. Stay tuned. On the next video, we're going to get this body properly mounted, and we're going to start on our floor because, as you can see, stock floor is not going to work anymore we're gonna have to make all that from scratch so stay tuned for all that if you're not subscribed please hit that button now if you are subscribed and make sure you have your post notifications turned on you'll get notified every single time i post a new video also for the coolest merch on the planet go to caseyscustoms.com get you a cool hat or short or hoodie thank you very much for watching please like share comment all that good stuff they tell you to do at the end of videos and check out some more of my other videos peace i love you from the supernatural car I've been getting